In this video, we take Southfield Road and the Southfield Freeway, and we'll see the contrast of all the flavors that Metro Detroit has to offer. From the burnt out suburb of E-Course through the ghetto west side of Detroit, and then finally, we'll end things in one of the wealthiest areas of Metro Detroit, in the snobby suburb of Birmingham. Hope you're ready to be judged, people. So yes, E-Course is where we start the video. Venture too far away from the main road and you'll think that you're in Detroit. Some YouTube videos and media outlets will make you think that all of Metro Detroit looks this way as they over-exaggerate the conditions of the suburbs. The truth is, is that there's only a few of them that are on this level of bad. E-Course saw a peak population of nearly 18,000 in 1950. However, with it being near one of Detroit's major industrial areas, the city began to decline around the same time that Detroit did. The violent crime rate resembles that of a neighborhood in Detroit, so that's not good. And to make things worse, the public schools are rated as a D- on Niche.com. Now we're in Lincoln Park, which feels like a breath of fresh air after being an e-course. Lincoln Park saw a peak population of 54,000 back in 1960, but it has since fallen to 40,000. At least it saw a 5% population gain over the last five years, so we'll see if that can continue. The crime rates in Lincoln Park aren't as bad as they are in e-course, but they're still pretty high, so you better watch your back. The public schools are rated as a C- on Niche.com, so there's better places to send your kids. Now we're in Allen Park, which is Lincoln Park's more successful twin brother. I would have said twin sister for better gender equality, but it's called Allen Park, not Karen Park. Anyway, don't credit Allen Park's better economic stats for being home to the Detroit Lions practice facility, as they haven't won a playoff game since 1991. Allen Park is smaller in area than Lincoln Park is, but it saw a peak population of 40,000 back in 1970. Today, it's down to 28,000 after seeing some growth in the most recent census count for the first time since 1970. The crime rates are around the national average rate and the public schools are rated pretty decent.
And here, Southfield Road turns into Southfield Freeway as it heads due north through the Dearborn area and then through the west side of Detroit before entering the Oakland County suburbs. Now we're in Dearborn, which is home to not only flooding on the Southfield Freeway, but also the Ford Motor Company headquarters. It's also known for being the city that has the most Arab Americans in the entire country. Dearborn hit a peak population of 112,000 back in 1960, before falling to a population of 89,000 in 1990. However, the city was able to reclaim the honor of having a six-figure population after the most recent census count. The crime rates in Dearborn are below average, and Niche.com gives the public schools a B, so that's pretty good. And up here on the right you can see the Ford Motor Company headquarters. And yes, the Southfield Freeway is prone to flooding during torrential downpours that move through the area. It's due to the construction of the freeway, as a lot of it is below street level as it goes underneath the main roads. It's also due to poor infrastructure maintenance over the years from MDOT. Uh, I didn't see the Ford Motor Company headquarters. You did a bad job of pointing the camera. Okay, yes, you're right. I did do a bad job. I didn't have the side camera set up on this one, but you could barely see it between the trees. And here it is. And now we're in Big Bad Detroit. But it's alright because we're on the freeway. That is, as long as you don't get yourself into a road rage situation. For whatever reason, freeway shootings have been on the rise in Detroit over the last few years, and a lot of them stem from road rage situations. Not that it doesn't happen in the suburbs ever, but whenever you see it on the news, it's almost always a freeway in the Detroit city limits that these shootings take place. You just have to drive smart around here and always try to be the better person, really. That's actually not a bad way to go about driving anywhere. You never know how crazy someone can be behind the wheel, whether it's a criminal in the inner city or a drunken hilljack in the mountains of Montana. Meanwhile, this section of the freeway between 96 and Grand River sees the most traffic on the entire stretch at 140,000 vehicles per day.
Oh man, it's 8 Mile Road. Does that mean we'll see Eminem? No, probably not. Maybe 20 years ago, but now, with all that rap money, he's living it big up in the suburbs. Speaking of suburbs, now we're in Southfield. It's home to a middle-class population, and it has been for a long time. It's more so known for its dozens of office buildings. Before the pandemic, anyway, many people would commute to Southfield for jobs that you would normally find in downtown areas. In fact, three of the four major network TV stations in the Detroit market have their studios in Southfield. The suburb is pretty much fully developed at this point, and the population is either going to stay the same or dip from here on out. The crime rates are right around the national average rate, and that's about the worst crime rate that you'll see in all of Oakland County. Outside of Pontiac, that is. Niche.com gives the public schools in Southfield a C, so there's better places to send your kids. Now we're in Lathrop Village, which is a city within the Southfield city limits. Soon, we'll be back in Southfield. Beverly Hills, that's where you should want to be. Beverly Hills, Michigan, it's one of the best places that you can live in Metro Detroit. The people here aren't quite as snobby as they are in Birmingham up ahead, and you have access to great public schools. Plus, the crime rates here are under control. 
It's a really small burb that doesn't have more room for expansion, so the population will probably always stay around 10,000. The suburb of Birmingham is the last place that we go in this video, and it's a really nice place to live. Downtown Birmingham has many nice restaurants to where you can go spend a night out on the town. The problem is, the cost of living is sky high, especially when compared to the rest of not only Michigan, but the Midwest. It's actually more comparable to California prices. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is over half a million. If you want to hang out with the popular kids, you'll have to buy your way in. The city also has a reputation for their residents being pretty snobby, as pretty much everyone here has money. Public schools are great, and crime is basically non-existent. Well, with that said, I do end the video here, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my Michigan playlist, my Detroit playlist, or in my Detroit suburbs playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.